we're going to be canning split pea and ham soup today. This is the first one in kind of a series of cooking videos that we're going to do. Some of them are canning, some of them are just some baked items, but basically it's using up stuff out of the freezer and uh, that stored kind of pantry items or, or um, you know, potatoes, that sort of thing that needs to be used up before the next gardening season starts because we all know storage is sometimes at a premium. But I'm gonna show you what we dug out of the deep dark freezer and uh, how, where we're gonna start here. So in the deep depths of the freezer, I found some old pork hocks that I had saved. Now these pigs were butchered three years ago, but you know, they kept really, really well. A little bit of freezer burn here and there, but otherwise not too bad, and they're, that's perfect for making soup. So I actually found two more packets of this, so I may do another batch just to use them up, but uh, we'll see. So we're starting off here with four pork hocks. You can see this is my big pot. They're pretty, Pretty big size pork hocks. Um, so in typical hickory craft fashion, we're doing a big recipe. So at this point, this is about it. I have added eight liters of water to my pork hocks and we're going to get this to a boil and allow it to simmer for a couple hours, making us a really yummy broth as well as cooking that meat so that we can cut it up to go back into the soup later. And the recipe we're going to use is going to come from my favorite canning book here. So we boiled our pork hocks until, as you can see, the meat fell off the bone. We were about five hours of boiling uh, in that eight liters of water. So now what I've done is I've separated the uh, broth, strained it through a fine uh, mesh there to get any of the bits out of it. And we now have to let this cool. I'm going to put it in the fridge. Uh, it's late here now, so we're going to do overnight, but you could just leave it a couple hours in the fridge. But what you want is that layer of kind of fat that's on the top to go hard so you can take it off. You don't want to leave that in your soup. In typical Stephanie fashion, I'm doing a big recipe here. Uh, this will make seven jars for in the pressure canner, plus a good meal for tonight for supper. I'm going to put in the description a single batch I'm making four times that. So single batches usually make um, two quart um, jars. Uh, but I find if I'm using the pressure canner, it certainly makes sense to do the seven and have enough for dinner. Another thing that I will mention is I am using the pork broth, which I am showing you and I'm going to show you in a moment, but you can just use water. You don't need to make the broth. Uh, it, it does work. I've done it before with just the water because all I had was a ham from the grocery store to cut up. It's just that I happen to have these hocks, so it makes sense to do it this way. It does taste amazing both ways. Love this recipe. But let's get down to it, and we'll show you how we go. So next morning here, and um, you can see the fat has settled on top of this uh, broth. So basically next step now is to filter that fat out so that our broth is not oily. You don't want too oily when you're pressure canning because you might have problems with seals. Uh, so we're going to get that out of there. That's again our eight liters of broth, so that's what we need to do four times this batch. Also, you will need six cups of carrots and four cups of onions. I'm going to cheat rather than chopping by hand. I'm going to use my little um, handy dandy chopper there, but uh, if you want to have bigger chunks, it does help to uh, chop it up by hand. Uh, the only other things you're really going to need for this are salt, pepper, your uh, split peas, and allspice. Super simple recipe, very easy to do. Basically, you just have to wait for it to cook and wait for it to can. So we're gonna get started on this. I'm gonna filter the broth and then chop up the veggies and then I'll bring you back. So here we have our broth, eight liters, all ready to go. We've got all that fat somewhat filtered off. I mean, we didn't get it perfect, but that's okay. But I did not throw away that fat. That is basically a rendered lard. Now, uh, I've not rendered lard before, so I may have done it on a bit of a high heat, which apparently does make it taste piggish. So we're going to just save that for doing uh, fried stuff like meats and, and eggs and things like that. It'll be perfect for that. Maybe not for baking, but that's all right. We've got lots of goose lard still to come to uh, get done properly for baking. But back to the soup. And what we're going to do is add two bags of split peas. Now uh, here in Canada our bags, at least the ones that I buy, are 32 ounces. So uh, this recipe here in my ball canning book calls for 16 ounces per batch and of course I'm doing a four times batch because that's how I like to roll. So we're going to use two whole bags of these peas. We're going to put them in and then 
two, two bags of split peas. So once you've put your two bags of split peas into that broth, uh, you're going to now wait until this comes to a boil. Now the recipe calls for boiling it for one hour or until the peas get soft. I've never found that it takes the hour. Uh, I basically do half an hour and then I add my other ingredients for the next half hour and then can it. Uh, I find if I do the full hour plus a half an hour after I add the onions and carrots, it's just mush and it all kind of congeals in the jar, which still tastes amazing, but uh, I'd like it to have a little bit of, um, um, you know, chunky consistency still. So uh, we're going to get this boiling, count off our 30 minutes, and then we'll bring you back. We have been simmering for half an hour, and I'm just going to try and get this up here to show you what I mean. See those peas? They're already soft and starting to break up. So in my mind, that's enough, even though the recipe says for an hour. You also are still going to pressure can this, so it's going to be mush, which is what you want. So next step is to add the rest of our ingredients. So we had four cups of the chopped onions. I'll scrape these out later rather than bore you with the details. Six cups of chopped up carrots. And again, remember, I was doing a four times batch so that I had enough to do at least seven jars plus dinner. Uh, now I've got my four cups of meat that I took off of those pork cocks. Unfortunately, I did not cover them, so they got a little dry, but they'll get softened up in here easily enough. Now you can use just store-bought ham. I just happen to have these pork cocks. These are not, uh, what's the word for it? They're not cured. made cured. They're not cured. It's just basically like using a, a pork roast. So uh, it works for us though. That's how I usually do it. Allspice, one whole teaspoon. It's a quarter teaspoon for each recipe. So I'm doing one whole teaspoon. Same with the pepper. I'm doing one whole teaspoon. And with the salt, I'm starting off with two teaspoons, but I usually try and taste test it after uh, it's had some sitting time here with all the ingredients in the meat. So at this point, we're gonna stir all this in. I'm gonna let this simmer for another 25 to 30 minutes. Just kind of watch it. If it seems like it's getting overcooked, then you're done because you want to get this into the pressure canner. So we'll bring it back. All right, so the jars are just about done sterilizing in the oven and I am getting my pressure canner ready. Now one thing you want to make sure you do is you always put the three quarts or liters of water in to your canner before putting those jars in and get it kind of warmed up. Now I've used hot water, but I am going to get this on the oven, but I just wanted to show you on my canner it's a wonderful thing. Instead of having to measure out those three, you can see here there's little notches at different uh, measurements in here. It's for oils, things like that if you were cooking with it. And we've got the three liter one right there. So that works out awesome. So I've got it filled to that. We're going to get this on the stove uh, so that it can start to warm up. You really don't want to put those jars into cold water. So let's get that done and let's get canning. One important thing to remember when you are pressure canning is always check your little nozzle here. Make sure that you can see daylight through it. I usually give it a good blowout just to make sure that it's not got anything crusty in there, especially if you have hard water. And another interesting part that people don't always think about is this little guy here. Now, I take this out and soak it in vinegar occasionally. Uh, I have hard water, so it does get a film on, and sometimes it takes a little bit of work to get that sucker to pop up. Uh, so definitely make sure that your uh, sealer there has got uh, free movement. And last part that I do is I always put a little bit of oil on my seal. Uh, olive oil, vegetable oil, it doesn't really matter, but just get a little bit of oil on there before you put it in. It just helps the seal to last longer, I find. So uh, I've been using this for years and I've never replaced it, so I guess it's working. Little tip that I'd learned, I learned it from somebody along the way. But anyways, the soup is ready to go. You can see it looks beautiful. I'll just demonstrate here. We're just starting to get clumpy. And you can bet after an hour and a half in the canner, it's going to be nice and soft. So, without any further ado, let's get canning this up.
Try and make sure that you're getting some from the top too. You don't want it to be too thick. And basically you want about one inch from the top. There you can see there. I usually use the bottom of the uh, thingy as my gauge. Move that over. You can see you got about an inch there. And then basically what you want to do is take a sterilized knife. Again, should go through the oven with everything else. Just sort of poke down, make sure you got no air pockets. Wipe off the uh, rim. Some people use, uh, I think it's lemon juice or something like that on the rim or vinegar. And then on goes your lid. You want just finger tight. Basically I do it until it spins the uh, jar just like so. And into the hot water in our pressure canner. Then we just rinse and repeat for another six times. And there you have it. All seven jars are in the pot. We're going to put the lid on, get this up to temperature and steaming. And uh, then we're going to uh, put it at 10 pounds pressure for uh, 90 minutes, an hour and a half. As you can see, we've got the steam coming. Our lock thingy is uh, popped up there. We're ready to go. Just have to put our weight on. Well, we are 20 minutes in and it's nicely sitting at just over that 10. Uh, basically when you're pressure canning you are better to stay a little above than to fall below because if you fall below you have to start counting all over again. Fresh out of the canner and look at them bubbling away. Eventually they will all kind of settle like that one there and it'll be the thicker stuff on the bottom but they store fantastic and taste excellent when you open them up. So fingers crossed these all seal and uh, also fingers crossed you enjoy this recipe as well.